Well, hello again to all of you. I'm really glad you're back. This is such a lovely time we get to spend together via these podcasts. A few days ago, I had the opportunity to visit friends at a lovely little dinner party, and the host and hostess own a couple of large dogs, and two of the other guests brought their dogs along. So there was a big love fest with the animals, and of course, as you can imagine, it's a very dog-friendly household which really reminded me of my last two dogs. I did not have them at the same time. I got the second one about a year after the first one had to be put to sleep, a really terrible day in my life. And in any event, the first one I brought with me from Colorado when I moved to Florida. She was a huge, gorgeous German Shepherd. She was a real German, German shepherd, although I did not get her over there. I got her in Colorado, but she was very large and did not have the sloping hindquarters that at least a lot of the German shepherds here in the southeastern part of this country have. She was simply a magnificent animal. No other adjective really would do her justice. A big girl, you know, 115, 120 pound dog. Very sweet and very loving. And then the second dog we had was a big Rottweiler mix. I don't know why I ended up with these two enormous girls. She was mostly Rottweiler, but she had something else thrown in there a little bit. She had longer, floppier ears and a tail that had not been cropped and so on, and not quite so barrel-chested, but she too was in the 115 to 120 pound range. And precious animals. So at that time, I had a lot more private clients than I have time to have now. And I would always warn everybody, I have a big dog, but don't worry because she's marvelous and very friendly. So each of these girls taught themselves, because I didn't really do this, that when somebody came to the door, they would sit down like ladies and lift up a paw so she could shake hands with whoever was coming in the door, and it was all very sweet. And the interesting part is that we would go sit down, and the dog would come over and sit right at our feet and never move and never be any sort of a problem, never notice, unless somebody would start to cry or be visibly distressed. After all, people don't usually come see me when they're in a glorious frame of mind, so it's not too uncommon for people to be in a distressed state. And on that occasion, the dog would get up, put a paw up on the person's knee, and look directly at them as if to say, I'm here, you're safe. Both dogs did that. And since I did not have them at the same time, it's not like one learned from the other. They both had this empathetic sense of recognizing when someone was in distress and being very present with them. And as you can possibly imagine, this had a beautiful, comforting effect on people. And they always ended up with a smile on the face. And I thought, Wouldn't it be great if we had as much sense as the dogs do? Now, one of the hallmarks of how they were operating was that there was no judgment. There was no separating those who deserved to be comforted and those who did not. They were simply 100% there. It was just beautiful to watch. So what if we conducted ourselves with the same kind of grace and dignity that those girls did? And that wherever we happen to be, we have foremost in our mind to convey, I'm here and you're safe. Because you're safe conveys a lot more than just those two words, you're safe. It also indicates you must be good. You must not have harmed anybody. You must be deserving. You must not need to be punished because you can't be safe unless those ideas are in place. And it really doesn't matter what you're offering this empathy to, whether it's a fence post or a person or a bush, because when you're desiring to offer that to someone else, it's in your 
mind. You're the one who is marinating, if you will, in this idea of being there for someone else without any judgment. No need to be in judgment. Because one of the things that we're all instructed about is that anybody's non-loving behavior is a call for love. Because nobody behaves in a non-loving way unless they feel unsafe, unless they fear punishment, unless they believe the old adage that the best defense is a good offense. And so one does not want to be stopped at the form or at the behavior and to simply recognize no matter what, I'm here. And because I'm here and being here for you, you're safe. It's just a marvelous message. It says, I see through your facade, even if you don't. I know you're worthy, even if you've forgotten that. And it employs one of the great principles of living that so many people seem to somehow miss, which is what I want for you or what I offer for you or what I am willing to give to you is strengthened in me. One thing we must undo is the notion that if I give, I lose and don't have any more. That's strictly false, and it has driven us crazy to try to live a life of contentment based on this erroneous premise that if I give, I am bereft, I have less left, and I'm without. Because notice that to offer this to you, it's got to be in my mind. And if it's in my mind, I am always the first recipient which is why I don't want to give my guilt away to someone else. I don't want to project my shortcomings onto someone else because I'm the one who will have those fearful notions increased in my own mind. So at some point, perhaps when you're younger, perhaps older, maybe at the time of a crisis or sense of desperation, you question this idea of if I could just get my way, if I could just be into getting and getting successfully, then I can feel at peace and contented. And sooner or later, everybody finds out that doesn't work well because I'm always left there's got to be something else I need to get because all my getting and all my all about me just isn't working out well. So at some point when we're willing to say, what does work to bring me peace of mind? Then I'm willing to listen. I'm willing to be instructed and I'm willing to practice something else. In this case, we want to focus on what you give to others is strengthened in yourself. When you offer safety and support to someone else, you will notice your own sense of contentment, your own sense of being anchored in, your own sense of all's right in the world is strengthened in you. So hopefully because you deserve it, you will want others to be safe and notice how your life unfolds in a much easier and more comforting and warmer way. So how about if we all practice being as smart and as loving and as present and aware as the dogs and see if we're not much better off. Look forward to seeing you next time. Bye. Bye.